my next guest tonight here on Punky's Mixtape is joining me out of Central Maine, not too far from myself. I'd like everybody to welcome to the show, Treelock and Tomorrow. How are we doing, everyone? Yes, yes, yes. Quite, quite proper. Proper. Yes. So refined, so pontificated. Quite posh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> How are we doing, everyone? We're killing it. How you doing over there? Doing good. Just uh, trying to avoid the blizzard right now or whatever the fuck's going on outside. I don't even want to think about it. I got a lot of shit. No, you, <laughs> you got the right thing. You got the lights set up. You got like this whole like psychedelic enclosure right now. So you're in a good space right now. I That that looks nice. <laughs> yeah, shout out to my girlfriend. She all set this all up. Chelsea, the artistic uh, aficionado of the, of the gang. She's also on Treelock's album, hashtag Treelock2020, as Jinxie. Mm -hmm. The second song, Too Close. Oh, look too, at that. Too, whoa. <laughs> I mean, That's really, really. double fret. Double fret. That's what's up. Way, Way more double than threat. double. Way more than double. So my name's Treelock from the treetops. <laughs> feet busting out my Reeboks. Chewbock to them Ewoks. Too tall, long locks. Saying tall Spunion forgot his raps. Just saying Paul Bunyan forgot his axe. I spray freeze like ACs like reindeer. I slay tracks. And this is my brother, my best friend, Thomas. Tomorrow, the tune night. He's a gangster. <laughs> And you're looking at tomorrow today, so you must have crystal balls. <laughs> oh. Damn! Yo, is it getting hot here? You might be the first person to ever spit bars at me. <laughs> On the show, at least. I've had plenty of people walk up to me in the middle of a, the middle of a party and just, like, nose to nose and just start kitchen rapping at my face. <laughs> Swish bucket. Yeah, that happens. So for, uh, for... For my mixtapers that may not be familiar with you, tell us a little bit more about yourself and a bit about your music. Name is rapper, pop star, kind of a big deal. Uh, music is straight from the heart and the soul, and um, I have no idea what I'm doing, and I need help. <laughs> and an adult. Yeah, no, I need an adult. I said that the other day, and someone was like, bro, you are the adult. I was like, I ran. I left that part. I can't be right. That can't <laughs> be right. <laughs> Tomorrow is my Dre. Without him, I wouldn't be Eminem. Oh, a dangerous duo over here. <laughs> yeah, triple threat. Except I write my own rap. <laughs> <laughs> I like the triple threat with just two of you. It's like it's like the Lone Rangers. I'm, I'm the size of two people anyway. I'm six seven, so I'm a big boy. What about you tomorrow? Tell us a little bit more about yourself. I rap. I produce. I met him a while back and fucking he was uh, the, I'm, the first week I met Doing him. Good shit. <laughs> fucking we recorded a whole album worth of material in a week and then he got fucking kicked out of his house and I picked him up and it was it was crazy times. So fucking we've just been down ever since. He saved my life more times than I'm willing to admit. No, I probably would. I would admit him. Instantly just fast friends right from the beginning, just attached to the hip and just he let me borrow his laptop. I knew him for like one month. <laughs> He's like, yeah, bro, take it. It was like sick. <laughs> Damn. Dude, that's that's awesome. So how long ago was that? Yeah. Jesus. Five years ago, at least. Been doing this now for a half a decade Five together? Ago, so, yeah. Damn. Absolutely. So what's, what's that ride been like over the last five years? <laughs> how, it, how has the trees grown over the time? Well, I've been trying to spread my roots all over this fine, glorious state, uh, the, the Northeast Everglades. Because, uh, um, yeah, no, for the first three years, uh, I was homeless because uh, my pops died. So I was just like, I was always in Portland, like with a longboard and a backpack and like a box of ashes being like, yo, I'm rapping about my dick. And it was a lot of fun. And then, so now for the last two, I've been working on stability. Thomas has just kind of been steadily killing it the whole time. <laughs> developing his craft he's like kind of a wizard he freaks me out sometimes <laughs> i'm just like getting ninja skills there behind the decks this and production time he's just so per he's hyper yeah, intelligent a lot, of, a lot of youtube and <laughs> learning learning production and writing raps and oh, what do you what do you use to produce on i use logic <laughs> pro x use logic yeah yeah Sorry. So many wardrobe changes. This is amazing. I'm steaming, I'm steaming up right now. 
it's a hot day. In the, You're just in the too handsome for the camera. I got two hands. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, what is it? Is the rest of it? <laughs> yeah. I like to leave people on the edge, you know. I like that. I like that. Edge awesome. lord. I'm edging. <laughs> and you made the edging joke right afterwards. Like it. Oh, boys, we're going to have fun tonight. <laughs> I'm getting spicy. We're getting there. <laughs> well, somebody's got to warm up this fucking state. It's cold as fuck out here. Dude. I mean, we're, like, we're only like a few minutes into the interview. I'm already into my second cup of coffee. So, no banks everywhere. Why am I still poor? <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. Deep, deep shower thoughts right there. No, I'm rich in heart and spirit, so it's all gonna work out. Actually, this year my stars are all aligning because it's my 27th orbit around the sun. And if I'm not dead by the end of this year, then it's all uphill from here. I'm really excited. Well, like downhill, like downhill, like with the like, cause it's easy to go downhill, but like uphill, cause like, like, like a star chart. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Star chart. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you're in the 27 club right now. No, that's why I carry a white letter everywhere. Dude, I see I turned 27 on the 27th. Whoa. So and and I'm also a Pisces, and that's like very common for like the 27 club is a lot of them are Pisces. So when I that entire fucking year, I was mortified. I was like, hey, do you want to go whitewater rafting? Like, no, because it's probably how I'm gonna die. So well, I figured take any unnecessary I, risk. If I die this year, then I'm going to blow up. So whatever. It's either, that's the thing. It's either you're going to blow up or you might blow up. Yeah, like physically. Like every, physically, every, spontaneously combust. Right? Yeah, like I'm 10 seconds to midnight right before your 28th birthday. <laughs> that's a lot of guts, man. Oh, like 80% <laughs> blood splatter. <laughs> oh, damn. So obviously been just grinding hustling over the last few years finding stability for yourself working on finding your voice you two just getting stronger as a duo here together now you've played a lot of shows over the time done a lot of different things any of those moments stand out more than some of the rest okay <laughs> So uh, one time uh, I, I emceed uh, Harry, Harry's Hill, which is a, uh, uh, it's in start, I'm saying everything wrong right now. Uh, MC, was that Hoedown? Yeah. Yeah, I emceed Harry's Hoedown in Starks, Maine. It's a, can a cannabis liberation festival. And um, we ended up doing a late night set from, it, it was like two, three, it started at three. It was supposed to start at two, but when there was like a pushback. Yeah, a so that push, that hour was crazy. But uh, so, uh, we performed till sun up, so it was like starting to get light out there. We had like my buddy Bill with his guitar, and it was a really intense time. Uh, I drank a whole uh, fifth of whiskey on stage, <coughs> and uh, I mean, I don't. Do you have anything to say about this? <laughs> I don't want to say too much. Uh, it was it was pretty awesome. It was us, and it was uh, Bill, uh, Bill I on the incredible who helps him with the song Hide Your Feelings, which we'll be listening to earlier. And they performed that and it was just it was that I love was you, Bill. beautiful night. And uh yeah, it was a lot of fun and we were fucked up. That's bad. Bill was like Bill was like my guitar, it was it was fuzzy and 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 throbbing. Yeah. And I was like, we killed it. There was like 150 people in there, like with us till sun up. At 4:20, I got handed like a really big joint. It had like a quarter ounce in it. They're like, please up. I'm like, woo! <laughs> Out there in the woods, man. Out here in the field. <laughs> and for for the listeners who don't know, um, Harry Brown's and the Starks Festival is a is a large marijuana liber liberation festival you got a bunch of amazing human beings on an amazing piece of property great music been going on what 30 years now this festival I think it, is it is it 30 now geez I, I would have to I'd have to google it I definitely it's, it's definitely right around you know and I I've played there I've vended there you yeah, have got a lot of great memories as we say on the hill and mm -hmm. it's it's truly it's it's an amazing place to be you got some great folks there, great music, great food, so great wines, great herb. I, I honestly wouldn't be who I am today if I'd never went there. 
I feel like um, I really was able to be in a community of people who are really, they're just fucking woke, dude. Like they accept you for who you are and become your friends and family immediately. It was a good time. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, there, you know, back, going back in high school in the early 2000s, you know, me and my punker friends and my rave friends and my hippie friends, we'd all go. And it didn't matter which, you know, background that you come from or like what you rep. I mean, everybody was invited there. Everybody was comfortable there, you know, and it's, I, I honestly, I don't think I would be punky if it wasn't for my influence and my friends and my, my years of exposure there on the hill. I mean, digital nuts, digital nuts to that, bro. Oh. That's what's up. <laughs> Nothing but love. And I got to tell you, there's something magic about that late night set. I think it was 2012. I did a late night set there on Saturday night, and it was one of the best moments of my music career. It was so fun. There's something, there's an energy there's on that so after much. hour set. Yeah. Come, you it's so positive. positive. It's like magic. Like, it's crazy. I felt like I was, I went super saiyan. Like, I, that's why I drank a whole fifth of whiskey. It was water. I wasn't even, it didn't even touch me. I was like, I'm on a whole nother level right now. Complete out of body experience, 9,000%. And you're right. Like there, when everything lines up there, there's been, I've had some amazing, amazing moments there. You know, I think of like, um, like rustic playing there you know mm -hmm. like that oh man that was like unbelievable seeing the overtones there i've seen right. so many amazing yeah. funk and soul bands there different hip-hop projects electronic projects world sound you know different amazing vocalist singer songwriters even even my my silly ass up there singing you know so oh man I, I miss festivals. I, me too. <laughs> I, I miss the live scene entirely. Love seeing all my friends in one spot, you know? Yeah. And that's the thing. It always would be like a big family reunion because, you know, really? a lot of us, we run in the same circles. We got our little core group, but when everybody gets together, it's amazing. Like with Beltec or Harry's or, or Gaia or, you know, God, even like Scaryland back in the day. Yeah. Yeah, Fuda, yeah. Shout out Fuda. Fuda, yes, of course, yeah. Fuda Fest. You know, the North, Maine, Maine knows how to do it, but we got the property, we got the space, and Maine seriously has some of the best assortment of artists because we got a little bit of everything up here, you know? And we fucking kill it, and we kill it up here in the Northeast. Just check for ticks. <laughs> Just yep. check for ticks. That's true. I want to <laughs> check you for fleas, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so... Do that oh, tick, tick, tick check is my best pickup line. Tick check. We got to do a tick check. <laughs> oh, man. So we're obviously, we're all kind of feeling the weight of being now a year without live music for some of us. How have, uh, how have you two been maintaining um, during all of COVID? Working a lot. <laughs> I've been losing my mind. Um but I think it's in the, in the it's it's all for the best. <laughs> I feel like um, I've been maintaining. I've recently started uh, running again, which is super cool and really painful. But uh, <laughs> as a, as someone who's been smoking for a while, you know, I'm like, oh, this is a lot of pressure. But uh, yeah, no, just losing it all the way entirely, but in a good way, like all peace and love. Like I feel like this time apart is an opportunity for us to all assess ourselves. And that's so important uh, in a community because if you never take any time to assess yourself, you're just gonna be assessing everything else. And that's how so much judgment and hate and, you know, it's, a, it's like the social media dilemma kind of, but at the same time, I'm rambling. Social media makes me feel connected and disconnected. I don't wanna get into it. But, but you're out there. <laughs> You're absolutely right because you know at one time it's a great it's a great tool to socialize, connect, and network. But at the same time, it can if you're focusing on that and things like that. Like I, like I tell people, like Facebook isn't real life. It's all presenting self. It's what everybody wants you to see. You know, mm -hmm. it's not the nitty gritty. It's not real. It's all presenting self. You know, so it's at the end of the day, it don't mean shit. It I'm either sharing like really funny memes or just like accomplishments at this point. I used to complain all the time. 
And I was like, why am I doing this one day? I was like, this doesn't make any sense. Because the more I complained, the more I had something to complain about. I'd find more and more things to complain about. I was like training myself, becoming addicted to that. So now I try to just like only post good stuff. And I'm seeing more good stuff happening in my life as a result. I mean, maybe it's not a result, but it feels like a result. You know I mean? Is it a result? I think it is. I think it is because when you sit and you you put all your, your energy into something, let it be positive or negative, you're it's what you're focusing on. So when you're in that negative mindset, you're just, you're seeing all the little things that trigger and piss you off around you, you know, and it's the, and it's almost, it becomes more apparent to you. It's kind of like, um, not to deter like numerology, but like with like people like, Oh, like, Oh, this number, this number means everything to me. Like, Oh, I see the, I see this number all the time everywhere, but like, that's because you're you're mentally trained to fix and, and to fixate on those things. Mm-hmm. So it's the same thing with like with with <laughs> negative energy and negative you know perception. If you're just training your mind to just be expelling energy, expelling hate, you know, being angry, complaining, then that's all you're gonna see, and you're gonna miss those little beautiful moments in between. But when you change your mindset and you start putting out positivity, and then those are the those are the things that you're looking for in the world, in your art, in your music, you know, in your entertainment, in your food. It doesn't matter. When you just start becoming a, a positive receptor, then you start to see those little moments in between of the beauty in the world. Mm-hmm. I had to do the same thing. I meant I was just running myself ragged and just angry and just frustrated and i'm like what is what is the point of all this you know let's let's get back to basics here you know let's go back to what feels good and let's champion those things because that's what's important at the end of the day real talk real talk on the mixtape it happens (laughs) tomorrow how you been maintaining buddy no uh... (laughs) No, I was, I was so I, excited. I was like, yeah. <laughs> no, just when you were like, when you look for numbers and you, you think numbers are following you, it's like it's just because you're training yourself. That's not necessarily true. There's definitely some undeniable things that happen. Well, as far as when you're looking for sequences, I'm not talking about the larger scale, but as far as the the single kind of in the moment. Numerology was a bad example, but it's like when you see like a certain time every single day and stuff like that, then you yeah. mentally train yourself to start looking at that time. It's the same yeah. idea of like negative perception. So not I guess numerology was a bad example, but I guess like um, I get, the time get of day and things yeah, like yeah. that. It's where you it's where you lay your focus in. It's what's important, you know. So yeah. So I've been trying to maintain the positivity. And obviously, you've uh, you both been pretty busy because you just dropped an album. Oh yeah, That's yeah, a, yes, <laughs> the album. Uh, hashtag Treelock twenty twenty. It's got twenty songs. It's really twenty one songs, and uh, it's for twenty dollars and twenty cents on my Bandcamp, which I think nice. you have to think. <laughs> tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about the album and what you put into it. <laughs> I know, I know. You, it, you just ask break down what you do real things. quick, you know, in a nice, um, in a nice, concise soundbite. No okay. pressure. <laughs> it is kind of okay. So there's like man, I'll try to put them all in order right now because I got a bunch of ideas about it. Um, so it's like obviously it's about me, um, and my um travel through uh different states of consciousness from. Um, a younger self to a to a, a, a higher self, and um, there's oh my goodness, because <laughs> it's like it's kind of like a roller coaster of emotion. Like each song is its own song, you know, but they but they go in a specific way that it makes like a ah, what's the word? It's like a. Yeah, I don't know the word, but it's awesome. And it's it feels like a, good when I hear the whole, even when I hear the whole thing, I used to like not like my music, but like, ah, that's cringy. And I listen to it, I'm like, holy crap. I'm like, Thomas, what are we going to do? <laughs> I'm That's why I'm hiding in the woods. <laughs> nothing, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. So obviously very personal and also a little conceptual at the same time, talking about, you know, different, you know, um, levels of consciousness and, and your perception and your connection through the world. 
that's well, yeah, really like, cool each song yeah each song's like a different story like uh like believe it is talking about like uh this really crazy long story about uh this time that i i felt like i went through hell and i had to like like looking at like how there's illusion all around you like there's always like a facade whether it be in the media or even in just like people in their day-to-day interactions there's always like you know so it was about breaking through that like nightlight is about finding my power finding our power tomorrow's on that as well finding our power and uh you know using it at, at not being afraid anymore that's why nightlight's near the end of the album it's like i'm no longer afraid because you deal with my fears and like um don't kill yourself that's life's job that's actually a song that i wrote to myself when i was thinking about killing myself and i was uh in a really bad really bad place you know and uh so like and then nightlight comes in later and it's like about realizing that you know you have worth and it doesn't matter if the darkness or the demons or the people who are jealous or whatever, the haters are going to come at you because you have what they don't have, which is yourself. And that's, that's all you have to be. So it's like, that's what the album's kind of like, a, it's ups and downs. It's daily life, man. It's a river baby float. And that's, you know, that's, <laughs> that's life. But like that level of honesty is huge. You know, that's absolutely huge. And that, and I think, it's a message that everybody kind of needs right now, especially as we're still dealing with everything that's happening around us socially. We're, we're locked away. We're disconnected. You know, obviously mental health issues are running rampant right now. This separation, this isolation, some it's hard. It's really hard. Suicide numbers are fucking exponential right now. It's heart wrenching. But it's good to hear, and it's important for people to hear stories, messages, songs, music, art about the subject matter and hear that you made it out on the other side. People need to find that, you know, more than ever right now. So that way they don't feel alone in all of this. And I think that's like one of my, obviously my favorite things about music is the sense of community that it brings in. And if you can come in with purpose and heart and honesty, but I think you've got something going. And that's one of the things that I appreciate most about both of you as an artist is the level of honesty that you put into your music. That's huge. You know, it really is. And having like a message like that, it's not an easy subject matter to talk about depression, being suicidal, you know, having anxiety. This is not easy conversations to have, but they're important conversations to have. We don't, we shouldn't be afraid to talk about our feelings and the weight that we're holding down that's the only way to let it go because otherwise it's just gonna it's gonna sink you down hide your feelings. yeah yeah hide your feelings hide your feelings sorry it's, a, it's just it's funny the, it's the rule it's, 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 it's the rule no like hide your feelings is how it felt like when i was like uh you know having a hard time i right after my pops passed and i was homeless like uh felt like people like would, were more likely to buy me a beer than offer me like a floor to crash on while I get a job you know what I mean and it was like you know anytime I talk about like man I really want to fucking figure out my life can, you know can you help me figure out how to figure that out you know people you know be like oh, oh oh you know what I mean like when you're upset and you tell people you're upset they avoid you like the plague you know so it's like hiding feelings and that's like kind of how that song works it's also but it's also like uh being like nah because this is my feelings. We all have them. It's all good. And it's tr- and ugh, you're so right because ugh, people are more inclined to offer lip service and they're like, "Oh, I can help you in this very moment." But they, it's kind of like, "Oh, I can give you a fish." But you're sitting there. You're you're begging to be taught how to fish. You're looking for some sort of insight, perspective, and just trying trying to get sort of semblance of normalcy back. And it's amazing the loops people will jump through just to avoid that real of a conversation, you know, and it sucks, you know, you know, and it really sucks. Like, yeah, the beer is nice in the moment at the same time, but you know, a place to to put your head down and to actually feel like you could confide in somebody. Those, those moments are few and far between. And that's why I say these conversations have to happen. So that way we can create some sort of normalcy with it, that it's okay to talk about. We don't, you know, just because it's hard and it's heavy and you might not have any sort of um, expertise on it, it doesn't matter. Sometimes all people need is an ear, 
you know that's why i write it down that's why i write it down because when i write it down and then once it's like when, once we record a song it's like actually like ready and done and like when it's uh, it's all it's like once it's like out there in the world it almost feels like it like heals that part that i was dealing with like because i addressed it you know and that's that's one of the best things if you can work through some of the personal challenges and tragedies that have been in your life and you come out on the other side with with a with a larger sense of self and a, and a new perspective and you that's the evolution you you actually worked through the issue as compared to staying rooted in in the past and this feeling all that negative energy with no outlet for it you know and that's one of the things that i feel like the semblance between like punk rock and and hip-hop you you both have this this sense of integrity but also this sense of truth that um is accompanied to the style as well that's one thing that has always made and will continue to have me be a hip-hop fan for my entire life i mean i love punk rock with all my heart but at the same time there's so many amazing genres out there that are just as amazing just as honest and just as real but just from a different perspective it's still that same energy be un, un, unapologetically you spit in the face of who wants to take it from you <laughs> exactly i'll fight i'll fight fucking tooth and nail for my principles and for the people that i love and that's one thing that's the semblance between punk and hip-hop is that same idea it's very it's very rooted it's very you know i say like it's it's the people's music it's not like cock rock fucking radio <laughs> rock you know where there's no soul and heart to it but if I get a song on the radio, it's still gonna have heart and soul, okay? Just in case, just so we're all clear now. <laughs> and as long as it's as long yeah. as it's not Nickelback. <laughs> Man, they got a bad rap. Everybody, everybody like just trashes on them. But I, you know, they come on. I'll be like, yeah, these guys suck. Singing all the words, you know. That's just <laughs> one. Crap, like, real quiet. I'll, I'll crap on them, but I just can't dig it. <laughs> you know and if i had to make any friend here on the uh, or make any enemy here on the show it might as well be nickelback or be trapped like, they can like, both fuck fuck like we're gonna come and kill you <laughs> you're like no you're not <laughs> like, i don't throw shade at a lot of bands but nickelback and trapped can just both stop existing and i'd be fine with that is that a real <laughs> thing that happened i heard that um one dude bought all the tickets to a nickelback concert just to sit in the front row and like tell them they're trash while they play and like heckle them. i don't know if that's true but I know that Trap just played to an empty strip club of like six people, so they're doing fine. They're killing it. <laughs> they're killing it. Strip clubs must be weird right now. You gotta wear like the like the rubber suit or like it's a, you're just like in a full body condom, like what's up, baby? <laughs> it's like I'll, I'll like it. sliding money through a crack in the plexiglass. <laughs> well, they gotta you gotta spray it first. <laughs> yeah, you gotta like spray it with like Lysol, you got like a whole misting station. And they put it they put it in this set so like a uv light you know and they cook away everything else what's well, not uv what is the other one no it's uv, it's UV. It's got, i don't know i think so black, oh, you, know, like a, you know black light in a strip club not a good idea <laughs> <laughs> oh damn but we have fun we have fun around here <laughs> so just dropped the new album um obviously I know both of you, you're probably working hard on something else to follow up behind it. What do you got coming up here in the future? A few things. I got, I got, well, we're working on a group project. Robots don't sweat. <laughs> they don't. That's how you know. <laughs> Robots don't sweat. That's a great project name. Robot, <laughs> Robots don't sweat. Rough boys. <sighs> yep. Damn. You got yes, you got room for a bruiser in there. I want to be in robots. Don't sweat. Yeah, um, absolutely. I'm sure, you could help us make a track for that project. Fuck yeah. That'd be, that would yeah. honestly be. Exactly you had me great. sold yeah, just yeah, by yeah, the yeah. name. Yeah, Not yeah, nonsense. Yeah. will be like, what? Yeah. Dollar bill. <laughs> Shout out Chair Jordan. We're on chairs right now, bro. <laughs> They're pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. So what's up? What's robots don't sweat? A secret. <laughs> a loud secret. The seat like it's like Area 51. You don't really know. You know. <laughs> All right. I can I can wait to the big reveal. Yeah. Until, uh, <laughs> until first contact happens. Damn. <laughs> so working on some projects, staying busy. Now gotta gotta ask, is there is there anything on the album that was there any track that like really like 
I know it's obviously a bunch self-discovery. Anyone that really near and dear, like super special to you that stands out? I'm gonna need a second to think about that. Mm. Oh, about you tomorrow as he thinks. Yeah, so I mean, the thing is, I like a lot of the songs on the, all the songs on the album. As a like. producer, is there anyone that you're like, "Fuck, dude, I killed this!" Like that you're just like really proud of? I really like Dead Ends. I think Dead Ends came out fucking awesome, and I just love my verse on that one because it's just like a bunch of wordplay. It's it's really fun, and fucking uh, the but yeah, no, I I really like that, and I I, I gave a fuck. I think came out really fucking dope, and. Uh, which I produce. I, I I produce a few tracks. I, I also like produce, half of it, half yeah. of the album, pretty much. <laughs> I invest now. I fucking love that one's like fucking about. Dude, um, the bass hits hard, bro. What, what, how we, like, is like, like the, it, the last line is like a magical what we could be if the uh, we, oh, oh. after wage slave. Oh, oh, how do you say it, dude? Oh my god! I'd have to say I'd that have to wrap the server. whole thing. <laughs> you have to run through it. Get what all the verses with... in your head and get to that spot. Yeah, yeah. So it's much. like, what could we be without way slavery? Is basically the idea of the song. I don't even know my own song right now. <laughs> What's up, Grammys? I'm hoping to win a Grammy with Hide Your Feelings. So I'm just putting that energy out there. I mean, I'm not really hoping it's going to happen. It just might be in a long time, which would be sad, but that's fine. Uh, we're actually thinking about doing another version of Hide Your Feelings with like a band, but I'm not sure. I haven't found the right band yet. But so well, that, one, that one's special. I mean, they're all like, they all mean something to me. I get real hype when nightlight comes on. When it gets like, when nightlight yeah. happens, I like it. I get super excited, like no matter what's happening. So that's, that's cool. Um, I, uh, Half, Woke, Half Woke Wooks is, uh, I think one of Thomas's favorites. Tomorrow. Yeah, I, I like that one. It's a good one. <laughs> that is like a one of Thomas. It's like a fucking. Uh... His name's T Tomorrow. I'm going to call you Tune Night or, or Night. A tune. You can't call me Jim. a tune. The one call you got Jim. that one. My oh boy, Jim. Sorry. You're Sorry. Good. You're good. <laughs> Damn. Damn. I was gonna. I was gonna <laughs> say. Thing, so I'm, I'm still. I'm still working out the kinks. Well, you got. You got plenty of time. You got plenty of time. But you know, we've got a lot of people watching. So if you're looking for a collaboration for hide your feelings mixtapers he's looking for a full band to do it right we've had one mixtape collab so far uh with loke dab and mo flow i would love to see another one happen so mixtapers check yeah. out hide your feelings because tree lock and tomorrow are looking for a collab i'm putting it out there i'm putting it out there for you <laughs> <laughs> oh man thank you yo yeah. who is this little stunner this is pinky yeah. Oh, it's Pinky. Pinky Punky. Yeah, Pinky, pinky meet Punky. Punky. Of course. Pinky meet Punky. Punky, Punky, Punky meet Pinky. Pinky. Yo, dude, I'm telling you, some shit is undeniable. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Her name is Pinky because she has a pink nose. I'm on a wheelie chair, but it doesn't really wheel on carpet very good. Oh, my God. She's adorable. Oh, mine. Mine was behind me, but he left the top shelf. So just don't step on it. Okay. Sorry, oh, what up, Pinky? Pinky? You're going to get your own little, your own little name title card. <laughs> holographic for pinky oh damn so working on new stuff got secret projects in the future um before we part ways any final thoughts towards the world oh man um geez wait it's already over i think he says all right uh <laughs> this is hard <laughs> final thoughts like like is this like my final thoughts like this yeah. is the last time i'm ever able to think <laughs> no, it doesn't have to be your last <laughs> thought but because that's a lot of pressure like i almost don't even want to think it yeah no not your last words but just uh any <laughs> <laughs> um you either ride the wave or you under it okay, is that good rap shit i like that i'm the undertone and, uh, thank, i'm thankful for everybody who listens to the music and feels it and Punky Bruiser's the man, and we had a lot of fun, and I want that R2-D2. <laughs> He's hiring it. I know. Oh, dude, out of, out of my, my cold dead ears. <laughs> hey. you, know you know what's even cooler? It's that he's a cooler. What could be oh, cooler is that R2 <laughs> is a cooler. From the Phantom Menace, Phantom Menace release, you know that shitty, that really shitty Star Wars movie? Yeah. 
I yep. hate the Phantom Menace. I'm not gonna lie. I'll probably get some shade for it, but I, I don't just love care. Darth Maul, bro. Darth Maul is fucking awesome. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah. This is my final thought right here. Inspire world of good. <laughs> See, okay, I came, I came prepped. I like this, dude. You're like Shrek over there. You got layers. <laughs> many layers to this Funyun. <laughs> oh man. You know, <laughs> you're right. Darth Maul. Darth Maul is awesome. Don't get me wrong. I just yeah. kids don't give a shit about Senate meetings. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing, but I don't Yo, know what you said. I'm confused. I, I, I watched one. I, I've only watched like the first one of the new ones. What? Wait. What? 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 Uh, totally Talking Star lying. Wars. Star yeah, Wars. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I'm not into. And the I was. Stuff I yet. did not like it. I thought it was really bad. It's got its moments. I'm. I'm all up for me. It's it's the Mandalorian. That's the Mandalorian's like the saving grace to Star Wars right now. You know what Star Trek fans don't do? They don't argue over which is the worst, or like they don't argue like, oh, I hate this movie, I hate that. Star Trek fans don't do that. Only Star Wars fans do. We're our own worst enemies. <laughs> we should fight. I mean, it's not us. It's the it's the people doing the movie. <laughs> well, it's true, but like. <laughs> It's, you know, it's when you involved. when you build right, up no, something over it, thirty yeah, years, like Luke Skywalker, you know, it's really hard to like fulfill the the legend, especially when it goes that long. So they had a lot of things working against them, you yeah. know. So I'll say that. I, I just say there's a there's a huge expanded universe of writings, and they could have fucking pulled from that, and it would have been far. Oh, as if I they would have pulled from Timothy that, that, Zahn's that books, been that would have been way different. If they would have pulled from from Zahn, who's written more Star Wars than most people, then that would have been fine. He's a great author. If you don't know about Timothy Zahn's Fraun trilogy, punky suggestion right there. Okay, it's We're... badass. Oh yeah, I like the I like the Darth Bane series. If you ever read that one, I haven't, but yeah. I've heard I've heard, dude. There's there's so many awesome <laughs> awesome little spinoffs and like in in the book version and the comics and stuff. I actually, I enjoy I think printed Star Wars more than a lot of the things that I've seen recently. But, yeah, for sure. But I digress, as we often do here on the show. <laughs> yeah. Uh, tomorrow, any yeah. any any final words for us? Bring your head in here. It'll be cool. Hey, get close. Oh, I like that. We can all get. We can all get up close. Uh, I'm gonna lose focus if I do that. There we go. Up close and personal. All right. Say it. 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 Uh, I'm sorry, but you're not gonna be able to look at the future until you look at me again. Ah. There's because we all know there's no future without tomorrow. It's only a day away. It's only a day away. Man, you're full of bars tonight. You're gonna you're gonna improv me a, a punky's mixtape little freestyle. Uh, that wasn't even a bar. I didn't. Rap. I know, but no, I, but I meant all night. You started yeah. off spitting bars at me. You came in hot. Can we can we end with some heat? Can I get a little uh, yeah. tree lock tomorrow, oh, love? Yeah, yeah. Whoever you want to go with me, you go. Go, go, go. Yo, Punky Boozer, hey, hey, hey. this interview was a doozy, and I think it was cool, and we should probably do music. <laughs> yeah, I'm into that. I'm into that. <laughs> I'm into that. Yeah, keep going on that. Keep going on that. Yo, we should do music. You can't refuse it. We on the wave like a cruise ship. She got huge tits. I got a huge... You already know what I'm saying. We're just chilling out, going super saiyan. I'm freaking out. My mind's insane. I'm just saying. I was going to pretend and do a written that I had. Instead, I didn't. And now I'm spitting this shit bad. Fuck. This is the only shit that I had. Damn. Oh, well. Sit back and laugh. <laughs> oh. You know, hey, we're just hanging out. It's, it's better Having with a, a beat. Blast. This is the crap. We on the rap, blowing no waves. You know it's that. <laughs> you know it's that. My scroll is fat. It is so big. I sit on my back. <laughs> <laughs> I like what the going to wall. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, it's from the heart. That's from the heart. I dig it. <laughs> I like, oh, I a little, got a little, have a little, oh, get, huh? catch a little air in there. Yeah, oh, yeah. You know, lean back you know my ball bag you know <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like a dj i don't know like 
what, what to do with these. We were saying that before the interview. Like, what do I do with these fucking things? You know, I'm saying I'm spinning. You know, and I, you know, I try to do stuff as I DJ. But I, I think I need to adopt this one. The, huh. I like that. I like this huh, move. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what's up. And, and it, I, miss, I miss rap night. I miss Monday of the Minds. I can't, I can't, I, I'll do whatever it takes to just go to a rap show again and just like hit the mic and like feel all that energy. Cause that's when it, that's when it's really special. That's, that's when the fun stuff happens. Oh, well, there's nothing, there's nothing better I, than I, 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 five I, I, nights I, like that, you know? Dude. And you know, it's cool too. Cause like Portland's like got a pretty good community. Like they're all about sharing the mic, you know, some ciphers, you got to like fight your way in. I'm like, Oh, well, you're somebody you're like, no, my turn to rap. <laughs> but like Monday in a Minds has been such an amazing launching point for so many hip hop artists here in Portland or in, in all of Maine, rather, even in New Hampshire as well. You get a ton of different artists that come up through. You know, I've heard and nothing but love, nothing but love from that community. And I love seeing like all the Monday in a Minds crew because they all support each other. Anyone someone's got a release, they're right there and they're just helping lift each other up. That's one thing yeah. that I love about our scene so much is that we've got. We've got some good social promoters, you know, people that are just want to see everybody up here, you know, yeah. that's uh, that's what it's all about, you know, and I'm, I'm actually an expert at picking things up and putting them down. So I'm trying to help out all my homies get up there. <laughs> also, if anybody can give me a, ha a hand up, you know, just uh, got you, I got you. I got you in my strong arms. Yeah, I know you're choking me out right now. It's like got me twitching. Safe words, Tauntaun. Pee myself. <laughs> Thought it smelled bad on the outside. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Thank you for having us on, man. Dude, straight up, this has been a ton of fun, you know. And it's all it's all about that community here, you know. Any and just showing that the world's a lot smaller than some of us think. We got the commonality through music from all around the world. And it's good to hear a positive message and just have a little bit of fun too, you know. Bring in life's been hectic. We're so close to the holidays. We're gonna find some semblance of normalcy. And the biggest thing is just staying connected, staying positive, and just you know, enjoying the moment for what it is. Life's too fucking short, man. Live, laugh, love, baby. <laughs> oh, ain't that <laughs> the truth? <laughs> There's like some like ultra Karen with like live, laugh, love like tattooed like on her neck. Where's she at though? <laughs> She's outside of a Tim Hortons banging on the door because they uh, they won't allow anyone inside the building, but she still wants to go in and look at everything. And not buy nothing. And not buy nothing. No, yeah. <laughs> Sh shows up with yesterday's coffee like they made this wrong. <laughs> I was here six weeks ago, and you really dropped the ball. <laughs> dropped the ball is definitely like, like Karen like Karen uh uh Karen terminology Karen a Karenism Karenism that's what I was looking for oh we found, man we found it together me and you bud it's me and well, we you. got this we you know we're just gonna uh Voltron that shit <laughs> that's say? what it's all about you know because honestly and w without all of you I'd be lost so I I want to let you know how much I appreciate you both coming to hang out this has been awesome you know, Yo, thank you. You straight up like you're killing it. You're doing great stuff. You're you have the, the right heart. You've got the right mindset for it. And we are wishing you nothing but the best. Wow. Now, now this is something I haven't asked anyone. That's awesome. You're so nice. I got my moment. Sometimes I'm an asshole. <laughs> but I got to ask is actually someone I, have, I haven't asked on the show. This all COVID shit aside, any, if you had this, like one, one thing, one big aspiration you can wish for 2021, what would, what would you want to happen? I want to go on tour and pack stadiums. A general strike in the government to be overthrown. That too. Well, at the same time, maybe we can like coordinate or right? facilitate some sort of like where like our, the shows are the, like, we like, you know, we're going to free the world. <laughs> not a lot of resistance just don't you know? shoot you know but now that's I'm the like, thing is you you no, 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 not but you know, I'm totally i i can be re-educated and i'm ready to assimilate into a society 
<laughs> I'm safe and I'm friendly. I swear, you know, I, I won't bite much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. This has been great. Thank you both so much. Um, where can we find you online to listen to? Uh, uh, okay, Sp uh, Spotify, iTunes. Uh, I think we're on Tidal, Pandora. I have a SoundCloud. Tom tomorrow has a sound tune. This guy. <laughs> you said I quit right. being a rapper, you dude. This is right, too much bro. work. Yeah. I, uh, uh, he, 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 we're we're on the internet. Uh, that's that's oh, a good perfect. Thing. Yeah, we're on the internet. You can find us there. <laughs> you, this, is, this is where you put the the links or whatever. Just like you'd like put them up on the screen, like little. Oh yeah, we're gonna have a little graphic, and I'll make sure they're all wrong. they will say like no, I'm, Angel I'm, Fire and uh, yeah. Geo Cities. You know, There's already one here. It says Tree Lock, at least on my screen. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! One you guys word. have been awesome. One. We are excited to check out a bunch of music tonight. Thank you so much for hanging out. You guys have been fucking killer. You're the man. Thank you so much for having us. Oh. Thank you so much. Don't be strangers. We definitely got to do this again. For sure. We're doing. For we're sure. do, you're working on robots. Don't sweat with us. I thought. Oh yeah. Oh, tr oh, trust us. Trust me. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> I, I need. I. I. I need to be doing different things. I'm all about that collab life. So. When uh, when we stop recording, we can have a, a secret a secret conversation. Oh, oh, oh. All right, get to hear. Oh, <laughs> oh. All right, I stopped recording, so tell me about it. Now I'm just fucking up, y'all. <laughs> My guests tonight have been Treelock and Tomorrow coming out of Central Maine. Thank you both so much for hanging out. Thank you. Treelock 2020, Robots Don't Sweat, Rough Boys. <laughs>